Nancy Ho is my guest today, and what an episode this is. We talk about what makes transformation leaders tick and discuss simple techniques that can help you become more effective, more energised, and ultimately more successful in your career. Nancy has worked with many global industry icons and is a thought leader on the professional paradox. I'm sure you're going to get massive value from this episode. Let me introduce you to Nancy now. Well, hello, Nancy. Uh, Welcome to the Transformation Leaders podcast. Um, Thank you for joining me today. I'm looking forward to actually exploring how your approach and philosophy can support and guide leaders in successfully delivering organisational change and transformation. And I appreciate you know you're you're coming at things from a slightly different angle to maybe other guests that I've had on the show. Um, but before we get into the detail, uh, please do share your story. Tell us a little bit about yourself and um, and 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 just you know just that general introduction so that people can understand All right, right. What your background and where you're coming from. Okay, I'm honored uh, to be invited today. All right, Tony, I'm Nancy Ho. I'm from Singapore. And I've been a, um, call it a change leader, call it a a transformation leader, but I like to believe that I've always been the catalyst Mm -hmm. for people that are not exactly too satisfied where they are and they want to get to where they want to be. Okay, I've been doing this for the last 27 years. Yeah, coming 27 years, right? And this thing called change is probably in my DNA. <laughs> right? Why do I say that? Yeah, from the time I was a child, literally, the only thing I knew was called change. Wow. Yeah. Why do I say that, right? Uh, to start with, right? It's not about just uh, getting too personal in my story, but then it is significant. Uh, my my uh, father passed on when I was only three years old. Right. But don't take it sad. It was not. Yeah, it was not. Of course, I'm not saying he's happy, but it wasn't like, uh, oh, my God, I'm devastated. My world is upside down. No, Uh, because, I mean, he had impacted me in a great way from the time I was in my mother's womb. Right. So I, the only thing I knew was called love. Right. Because she, we're so connected. So so I was sitting on his lap. My impression, I've been told, of course, again and again, how much dad loves me. So on yeah. and so forth. So of course, when he passed on, that was the first thing. Right. That I knew something is different. Yes. Very different because I no longer have the person that I can sit on his lap. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I'm, I'm kind of like uh, appreciate uh, the fact that I learned that since at a very young age. Because if you look at people generally, right, they get a shock when whatever change mm-hmm. or they detest changes. Yeah. And you know the only thing that remains constant is change. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? We, and we, yet we, when there's a change of policy, you know, a change of thing, people just take it so negatively. Yeah, yeah. Which is good yeah. because that, that that keeps us all very busy, doesn't it? But uh, you know, I think I think the the opportunity for people to choose to lean into change is so important um, skill to develop, um, and and obviously you, you you developed at a very young age. So so just yes, bring us up to speed in terms of like what your career your career today yeah. and what you're doing now. That'd be great. Sure. So, so I, I, uh, what I wanted to sum up was that it was like you know, it's, it's, it's just so natural to me. Change is just something you have to do differently. Yeah. So I grew up learning how to do that. So quite naturally, I progress into a career that way. Uh, not, not, to, not, not. Of course, I was so young then. I'm talking in my twenties. Okay, after I came back from the UK. All right. So I said, what do I want to do? All right. And I said, I know what I want to do. What I want to do is that I can impact on others, okay? As yeah, I was 24, I was 24 then, right? Uh, what do I do is impact on people. What I'm going to do is um, having some kind of control in my own hands. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like interesting at 24, right? And I said, yeah, to impact on people is like go for things that people find it generally um, not the norm. Yeah. Although change is the norm. But it's people liked uh, the comfort zone. They they love things that if they can be the same forever, you know that kind mm-hmm. of attitude. Yeah. So so of course you know without a lot of details and all that. Uh, when I was in Switzerland, I was in London. Uh, I've learned a lot of all these skills about uh, uh, the personal and professional development areas. 
So I went into that. Of course, I started first, I know, as a trainer. Okay. First, I started as a trainer, different areas of uh, personal development. And that's where I saw the big gap that, you know, people are adverse towards changes. Yeah. They don't take it very well. Okay. So that's how it got me started really about all this transformation. Right. So at that time, transformation, this word was not even a, the, the word, right? Nobody nobody understood that word. Yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I, I think it's still the so case. A lot, of people, a lot of people still don't understand the word. So um, I, I, I think there's a lot of education still to be done. Yes, yes. But uh, uh, yeah, they don't, they don't quite get it, but they know they have to face it. Hmm. And even more so in this era. Okay. Um, <laughs> So funny. Uh, so why well, I say it's so funny? I'm sure we've read the news that uh, uh, Dubai, the yeah. airport, flood, flooded, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Already, what was there was rain some months ago, rest. And I, I used to go to Dubai a lot, and I used to go there and do a lot of coaching on transformation changes and all that. Yeah. So I, so Dubai is pretty close to my heart, and I said, what rain? That's not Dubai. And then when I saw that two days ago, <laughs> the airport terminal was flooded in, right? Yeah, yeah. So again, you know, the attitude, which I'm glad being a Singaporean, uh, we are quite used to like, or rather the government had made it such that uh, they make changes conducive. Right. Yeah, they I, make I, changes I, conducive. Yeah. So that, that becomes easy, you know, yeah. uh, in the sense of attitude, yeah. I, I, mm-hmm. should, I should explain to the listeners, we, we're recording this on the 18th of April and um, yeah, the, the, it was in, been in the news over the last couple of days. Um, in fact, this morning in the UK, it was reported that Dubai in the last two days have had one and a half years worth of rain. Um, and, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That, it's been devastating. I saw, saw a video last night of someone driving on, on the motorway. Um, and going into the storm and literally going from reasonably good visibility to no visibility within the space of a few seconds. So, uh, yeah, quite frightening yes. for them. Um, so, yeah, yeah. It, as, as you say, getting absolutely is, is, is critical. Absolutely. Bringing it back yeah. to the... Uh, so the uh, sorry? Yeah, sorry. Uh-huh. No, so bringing it back to uh, the, the sort of core purpose of this podcast, uh, which is around organisational change and transformation. Um how do you define transformation? We just we just touched on the word, but what's your definition of the word transformation? I'll call it making that shift. Mm-hmm. Making that shift. Uh, I'd rather see that making the shift than really the word change because there's still a lot of, um, what they call it, good qualities, certain policies, uh, certain strategy that still works. Mm-hmm. So if we implement that word change, it suggests almost like you, you got to throw away everything altogether, mm-hmm. which is not true, all right? Absolutely not true, all right? Uh, so, so I look at transformation as making shift, but of course, strategically, right? We need a strategy yeah. to make the, the relevant shift, okay? The relevant changes, the relevant shift. But in order to do that, one has to deep dive what's not working mm. or at least preempt what may not work in time. Yeah. Then we will not be in for shock in that sense. So like I was saying that, you know, as our government makes it conducive for change because they preempt. Mm-hmm. They preempt what may come as may not be very positive as like the problems may come in three to five years. The problem may come in 10 years, whatever. I'm not, I don't work for the government, so but I see them doing it as I, watch, yes. as I grow up. I mean, I'm 60 years, so I've seen a bit, quite a bit of the transformation of Singapore. <laughs> All right. So first, we have to uh, deep dive to either A, what is the problem now? And really being very honest about it mm-hmm. and not, you know, denying, uh, you know, things will be, will pent out and be, that what I call the fake positivity Everything will be all right. No, no, no. What's not good is not good. You just have to fix it, so-called. So we've got deep dive to look at, you know, what's not working, uh, what may not work, yeah. and then what do we want? Um, of course, we refer, if we are referring to organization, it's all the same too. Yeah. All right. So the leaders have to sit, sit down and look at, you know, what used to work 20 years ago may not work anymore now. 
or 10 years or five years ago, especially let's call it the post COVID days that now that we are facing. Yeah. So I look at it that way, that shift that um, that's required. I think you, you raise mm-hmm. a really interesting point. And um, one of the things I've been doing recently is, is, talking about the virtue for organisations to have a chief transformation officer as part of the C- C-suite. And, and yeah. uh, whether that's a full-time role or a fractional role, it just, the, 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 the key is that there is that, that role. And, and, part, and the reason for that, I think, is um, a lot of times people get appointed into that role when they're starting a transformation to lead it. But I think there's a, a critical uh, element of it, which is that forward look. So what's not going to work? Yes. What are the opportunities moving forward in having exactly. that visibility and then looking at it across the uh, across the, uh, the the various functional aspects of an organisation? And you could say it's a crossover with the strategy piece, absolutely. Yes. But the key is to look at it from, through the lens of how the organisation needs to change and adapt moving forward and getting the, the the sooner you can have visibility of that and understand it the better prepared you will be to drive that the change successfully within the organization so absolute critical point thank you for that Absolutely. just um, just coming back to um um some of the things that you, you talk about um on your linkedin profile in, in general sort of uh, material that you put out you talk about the paradox of professional success so tell me <laughs> yes. more about that. I, I'm fascinated to understand a little bit more about that. All right. Uh, all right. Let me frame it this way. All right. So the C-suites, uh, you know, the, the, the business owners, right? Um, sure, they are at their height of their career, right? Or in their businesses. So often, you know, the success is like uh, the, the all looks like they have it. Yeah. Why is it looks like? Sure, they have it all, right? They have it all, the wealth, the position, right? The power to some degree and all that. But because I work with them personally, all right? One-on-one. The but is often they have void. So they have this void in spite of professional success. Yeah. Right? And they cannot show it. (laughs) Of course they can't, all right? So what is this void and this emptiness? And then that can lead to a lack of clarity because under, in the appearance, right, they have it all, mm-hmm. right? They have it all. So to 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 even talk about it, right, seems like it's strange. I mean, stop being like, you know, don't, don't start looking for trouble and you're all right. Mm-hmm. So of course the paradox of success, okay, is it's not uh, being negative, but really again, I like to deep dive. I'm a deep person in that sense. Yeah. So I actually deep dive to find that they may have the void, and then they have some past traumas or stresses that is unresolved. Mm-hmm. Kind of, you know, in a lot of culture, we sweep it under the carpet, or yeah. what we call firefight. Well, that is quite a norm, all right, in, in some situations, but if it becomes a habit that we sweep it under comfort, we comfort, then that's where it's unresolved stress and maybe even call it traumas. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, getting the right people, the talent, <laughs> uh, can be an issue today, especially the match. Okay, it's not just a talent as the ability, the talent as, you know, the skill set alone, but even the culture. You know, the feet got to be there. Yeah. Right? And of course, the, because they work God knows how many hours in a week, although a lot of organizations are thriving for four days a week, right? Uh, the point is uh, the number of hours they have, you know, put in work, they travel and all that. And that also can, uh, you know, impact negatively on their personal relationship. Yeah, yeah. And due to the above that I said, that certain health issue arises, what I call psychosomatic. Psychosomatic illness is like the mind created the sickness. Yeah. So I actually worked with a lot of C-suites, business owners, uh, senior managers and all that to actually look into all of this, um, I call them pain points. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. No, absolutely. Yeah. 
it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting that you know the, the three elements that you brought up there um are, are so critical the more senior you go within an organization the the, the more lonely it can become uh, because as yes. chief of deck or functional lead you don't want to show your mm-hmm. vulnerabilities often um to your team um or to your or, or to your fellow c-suite members um and, and and having that ability to be able to step back and accept those vulnerabilities and talk them through with someone that's not within the organization not connected is so important and um, that that's one of the reasons and one of the catalysts for setting up the transformation leaders hub to give people who are leading transformation that opportunity to share their experiences with with other people that are like themselves but not competing within the organization all oh, right um, correct correct but, but, it's not a trend right <laughs> yeah a, a, absolutely absolutely yeah but I, I, I think the, the, the second point that you raised there around bringing people into the team that are a, the right fit ah, again, okay all too often i find that there is a tendency to bring people in that are like yourself and and actually that can be detrimental to team effectiveness because you need that that variation within the team. So sure. again, one of the things sure. that I've found is that you tend to get lots of people in the, who've got the same mindset working within teams and, sure. and that can sure. create challenges. And the third element around that stress and mm. the the uh, uh, you know maybe the breakdown of relationships and stuff, something that we talk about all the time on this podcast. Because going through change and transformation is often mm-hmm. really, really stressful for everybody, whether you are leading it or whether you're receiving it, it can be stressful. So, yeah, totally, totally agree with the, with, with the three points that you raised. Yeah. You know, I, I worked very closely with this C-suite. He's fairly young, only 38, but uh, a startup, they've been around for like five, six years, coming to six years, okay? Mm-hmm. So they are not startup, just started one or two years, right? They still call themselves startup. Uh, in the AI, in the AI, cybersecurity, blockchain. Yes. Yeah, okay. So it's interesting. He comes in and talk to me every week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nearly every week, unless he has to travel, you know? Uh, he'll come in and literally I know everything about his company. Yeah. Every single person. You know what I mean? Even uh, like, oh, they just did a pay cut thing. Okay. So even the pay cut, what's the percentage and so on and so forth. It's not that he wants to fill me up with all the details. What is it actually is? It's like a soundboard. Yeah. I'm catching the gaps. Because when so- sometimes, you know, even for us, right? When we do something, we can be very fixated and we think we are right. Yeah. This is the way to do it. This is right. Okay. And I said right, wrong. I don't mean, you know, that that wrong, wrong, you know, yeah. but it's like we may not see the, uh blind spots. Yeah? yeah. So I'm like a soundboard, you know, that we hear that. I said, okay, wait a minute. All right. I hear something, you know, and then I'll bounce it to him. Like, oh, yeah. And so, so, like you said early on, you attract the right the, the people are just like you. So when they discuss in the company, they all sit in the same light. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And do you, do you find yeah, so- that sounding board then actually just having that having that opportunity for him um, to talk openly and almost get the thoughts that have been going around in his head how verbally, you know, when I do that, Correct. I know that when I'm talking about certain things or explaining certain things that I've I've had in my head with, with, with um, for, for for many weeks. By verbalizing it, it helps me to understand it and helps and 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 I, and I recognize often that as I'm starting a conversation or start starting a to to verbalize what I've been thinking, my viewpoints changed halfway through, and that's that's the opportunity, isn't it? That you're providing oh, oh. those C-suite members sure. that ability just to have that yeah. sounding board and verbalize what they're thinking. Yeah, I call it clarity. Yes. You know, as you verbalize, like you said, you know, as you go, oh, you know, they, 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 it creates a certain clarity. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's so key. All right. That's really so key. And then, you know, of course, after when, you know, there's a certain gap or there's something they overlooked or the blind spots, whatever it might be, then they can jump in and then know what they need to do. Yes. Apply the necessary, you know, uh, changes. So then this changes becomes not painful, inverted comma. 
but rather a necessity and and it's it's it can be quite motivational mm, yeah, absolutely because you see it as a necessity and you see it as it, it you know it's part of reach part of that um of uh let's call it the the, the moving blocks yes you know what's that goal so you no longer is that pain and also people that receiving it uh would then of course uh, the C-suite or whoever going to express it would know how to express it in a way that the people that receive it will also receive it in a more positive way because it's towards the growth. It's towards to a better thing. It's not, let's change. <laughs> we yeah. want to change. The policy says this. Uh, that that becomes too, uh, of course, that becomes painful or or people don't receive it well. Yeah. And, and, and leading on from, from, from that, once they've got clarity in their own mind about where they want to take the organisation, um, mm -hmm. so so I call that the North Star, getting an absolute clarity around the yes. vision, right. and then mm -hmm. looking to communicate that um, out across the organisation and, and start to build that uh, collegiate type of environment that people are working towards delivering of that. I often find that middle managers can sometimes... Mm -hmm be really supportive, but other times can be quite um, obstructive. What, what's, what's been your sense of, of, of that and, and what, what sort of things have you found work well in really engaging those middle managers in, within an organisation? Yeah, so true, so true. Some Sometimes they can, they can be destructive. If people take it personally, mm -hmm. it's usually destructive. Mm-hmm. It's as if it's against them. Yes. Or they have or they have you know something to lose. That kind of personal. Then of course they'll be guarded, they'll be defensive, the whole energy will be negative. So I prepare my my clients, the C suite clients, such a way that it got to be not it's not personal. Yeah. It's not personal, right? Uh, even like I told you the pay cut thing. They all took it very well. They all took it very well because they can see that it's not personal. Although, of course, it's not it's not uh, the most positive thing that, that happened to their life, but they see that it's, an, it's necessary. But of course, there's also other incentive that builds in. Yeah. And all that builds in, uh, that's not just simply like, you know, pay cut, that's it, goodbye. You know what I mean? Uh, or if you don't accept it, then you, yeah off you go you know it's not like that it's not just you know clean cut this way but there's an incentive that builds in and also a plan forward right. yes yeah so they will see that like that's what i mean by a necessity okay that uh yeah that's what we need to do in order to arrive to that destination that goal uh for the year you know things like that so yeah, so yeah. long if you express it not that they're not uh, uh, uh being personal about it or they're hurting it's good you know psychologically they are good <laughs> yeah yeah i think it is it is it's 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 looking at things through the lens of the individual that you want to engage with isn't it and 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 trying right. to understand what the change will mean to them and then frame it in a way that i think does two things one get provides them with clarity because a, a, a lot of times it's the lack of clarity that causes the stress Sure. And, and sure. secondly, as you say, if you can position it whereby there is a um, um, there's a benefit to them, um, so so they can see. And, and if there isn't a benefit, again, just being open and honest with them, um, it, 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 it is clear. And in, within large scale transformation, sometimes you can't be you don't you don't have the answers from day one. But oh, one of the things sure, that, that, that I always say to organizations I'm working with is that even if you don't have all of the answers on day one, you can give people an idea of what, what you're doing to get the answers and what time scales right. you're working towards. All right. So that you, you don't leave a void, you at least provide them with a roadmap of how we're going to get from A to B. Yes. Um, and, um, and and I think that's always critical because it, it's it's about really grabbing hold of the hearts and minds of people, isn't it, when you drive and change? Absolutely. In fact, uh, there was this other company that I work with, all right, I find that they are not 
not uh, together. I call it not together. It's like, you know, each individual is doing their own stuff. Yeah. Right? And we all know about what is teamwork. Right? We know what how important is teamwork. And especially when you drive change, you need that teamwork. Mm -hmm. So I stepped in and I, and I looked at it. I said, okay, sure. It looks at like teamwork. I said, first, we must have a, a good, energetic, strong, energetic theme. And then we work towards it. So I came up with this title, United Hearts right. Collective Success, Towards Collective Success. Right. Do you like that? <laughs> yes, yeah, that's good, that, yes. Yeah, United Hearts, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, working uh, towards, yeah, I didn't work towards collective success. Yeah. yeah. So I went on from this theme, I went on, of course, like the the, the uh, repercussion if people are not united. Yes. Rather than I go on the approach like, you know, uh, teamwork, you have to work together. They're already not feeling good. If you go say things like that, they're, just, ah, they're not paying attention. It's like, in our town, you know what I mean, right? So I just went that, and I went into that repercussion, and of course, part of the repercussion is also it impact them personally. Yeah, absolutely. It's not just the organization, right? So they see that then, then now working towards that, what is united hearts, and I saw the shift of a attitude. No, That's it, change. It, yeah, <laughs> it, it's so important, isn't it? I, I, I remember years ago, someone introduced me to a radio station, um, WIIFM. What's in it for me? Uh, and and yeah. every time you are um, dealing with individuals, you you always need to look at it. What's in it for me? For the, because that's what their sure. first thoughts will be. Highly likely Correct. will be. What's the impact upon Correct. them? Correct. So yeah, talking about what we want the organisation to do and where we want the organisation to be and why we want the change is critical. Absolutely, that we've got that clarity. But when we're communicating it, we've always got to yes. look at what's the impact on the individual exactly. and, 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 and how you can yeah. help the individual to move along the path that you want to take absolutely. them. Yeah, absolutely. And what's critical also is momentum. Yes. A lot of transformation leaders, thought leaders in that field, they go in and then they you know implement all these changes and then kind of like they go away and expecting them that they get it. Yeah. All right. I mean, yeah. right. People forget. Right. So what I usually do, I actually set up a Facebook page for them. Right. Yeah. And uh, I'm pretty big in making videos. Right. Because I have my group coaching and I'm always like, that's the best. That's the most if uh, time effective way of uh, coaching mm -hmm. and for people to learn. Right. Then to always get them to come together because everybody's always busy, right? So I produce these videos and according, like I said, the theme, right? So I would just do like a three, five minutes video, which everybody can must have three, five minutes at their own time. So they watch that and then they engage, right? I said, please comment. So from their comments, then I know what they're thinking. Yeah. Then only when I know what they're thinking, then, you know, together with the, with the C-suite, okay, then we can sit and, uh, okay, that's what they're thinking. So, again, the clarity, then we know either, you know, the, 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 the relevant uh, strategy, the re relevant steps, yeah. and also how to express it. So we speak their language. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, I think I've seen that work really yeah. well in, in internal social media sort of sites as well. What, what I remember, um, at Viva Engage, isn't it? It's a Microsoft. It used to be called Jammer. It's now Viva Engage. And, and people and uh, organisations that I've worked with have used that really, really well to create these channels because the key is right. sharing information, but the key is that engagement bit. And you learn yes. so much yeah. from the engagement on those, on those, right. uh, in those right. tools. Yeah. yeah, and also, like I said, momentum. Yes. The momentum, because they don't get one video, right? They continue getting it the second one. So if you don't get it the first time, you get it the second time. As the momentum builds, they, you know, they, they will get it as somewhat, some, somewhat. And of course, it's also important to build a kind of body system. Yeah, so I what I do is also like, you know, whatever we suggest on the, you know, the, the plan to the steps, 
all right, the strategy, right? We have buddy system that they work on it. Yeah, yeah. And one of the one of I have to believe uh, success formula is getting people to express their work through the core values. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's this organization core values. So everything that they do is coming from the core values. Yes. How do you go about yeah, doing so that? How, how do you go about doing that? Because I, I totally agree that that's a, a really effective way of getting people aligned and, 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 and yes. working to that mm. common objective and common aim. But it's not easy. It's really challenging, especially if the organisation um, – is um, like through um, like an M&A or a merger where you've got two different cultures or in some yeah. cases three or four different cultures all sort of coming together. Um, how do you, how, what, what sort of things do you do to get people aligned on the values of the organisation? So I think first it's called reset. Mm-hmm. Reset. All right, you you can't just take something uh from the old and expect the new, you know, so called a merger, yeah. you know, the yeah. other company to just accept it like that. So we would just have to reshuffle the cut, so to speak. <laughs> right? Again, put the people the as a forefront, not the policy as the forefront. Mm-hmm. Right? Reshuffle the cards, reset the whole thing, and then come out, come up, which I do that part of my work, to come up with the core values. Right. That's now so-called inverted comma the new core values. Yes. Rather, they are expected to follow what had been in place. Yeah, I find it effective that way. So the so-called the new core values doesn't mean new as everything is different, but you know, it's, it's a sad thing. And then uh, uh, we need to educate them. Yeah. Not just put it on the wall. Like you know the mission, the vision. <laughs> you know, you don't put it on the wall, but you. Uh, so in my in my coaching, all right, I do that. So we come up with that. You know, that so called core values. Yeah. All right, uh, explain that. You know, explain that uh, to the channelers, and then uh, how they then they break into teams. How can they apply that in their work? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we have to make it applicable. Power is not knowledge. Application yeah. of power is knowledge, right? Yeah, so they have to apply it. So apply the core values in their work, right? Uh, that, that's what uh, is important. Like what the core values is about, you know, independent and interdependent. Mm-hmm. Dependent and interdependent. So we talk about this thing and then they're going to practice. You know, everything is cultivation. Yeah, it's, it's that ability, you know? isn't it, of bringing the values to life. And and living and breathing them on a day to day basis. All right. And and, and especially Correct. when you are looking to change them or, 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 or as you say, create the new set of values. The the key is that the whole leadership team and the leadership team being the the all all of the wider leadership uh, team to live and breathe those on a, on a daily basis. Um, yes. Because. Absolutely. People will be looking for you to step out of line or to go back to the old ways. And the sooner you do that, it gives them the avenue to go back to what they used to do. But reinforcing yeah. it day in, day out, and, and celebrating when you see stuff working along the lines that you want it to work. And at the same time, identifying when people are going back to the old ways and helping them to move to the new ways is so critical to get that new habit forming almost and uh correct now there's there's, correct. A, what, there's a saying isn't there 28 days to form a new habit yes um and yes and it's the same principle if you if, if all you do is one communication or you know, four or five pieces of communication mm-hmm. it's not go and land it's that constant reinforcement day in day out that actually makes absolutely. these things land absolutely i think this 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 reinforcement is a little bit lacking though Mm, yeah. <laughs> because people get too busy just they just want to get caught up in there you know of course we are all busy and you know we have got deadlines and stuff like that so they, they are too too kind of like focus on the outcome mm-hmm. instead of focus on the process mm-hmm. so i insist all right with my clients 
focus on the process, the outcome will be positive. Because we cannot control the outcome. We can control the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, also the process is, you know, if we take time, like I said, working a body system, right? Uh, applying the core, uh, the core values, it, how you show up in your work, you know, stuff like that. Uh, like one of the core values, like um, the wow factor. Yeah. So everything you do, you want to deliver that wow factor, right? It's an attitude. Absolutely, yeah. I, I think I think just coming back to what you're just saying, I think it's important to get clarity around the outcomes that you're looking to 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 deliver. But once you've got clarity sure. and you've spoken about it, absolutely focus on the process to get there, yeah. Yeah. and 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 work that sure. activity on, on on the process. Great, yes, thank you very absolutely. much for that. Um, so so we we always finish off. Um, uh, each pod with um, a question about your non-negotiables. So, in in terms of delivering the change that you 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 help your clients to deliver, what are the non-negotiables that you want to have in place or need to have in place for that to be successful? I think non-negotiable it always has to come from first integrity. Right, integrity cannot be compromised regardless. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. But of course, we, you know, again, you know, the leader has to drive this integrity. Yeah. So yeah, it's non-negotiable as far as in integrity is concerned. Uh, non-negotiable in terms of quality is concerned. The quality so of the work. So what, what the was that? Quality. 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 It's quality. All right. Because if you like compromise the quality, right, then you cut corners. Mm -hmm. Regard, regardless what, what what business might be, it can be a service, it can be a product, is all the same. Yeah. All right. And third, of course, being result driven. Mm -hmm. Like being result different. There's there's three things um no, we great cannot not go without. No, no, great. So yeah, uh, integrity, quality, and results driven. Love it. Thank you very much. That was great. Thank well, thanks you. a lot. That was a really good session. Um, I'm sure there's a lots for people to take away. And uh, once again, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Nancy, what a great discussion. There's so many things that I took from this episode. Thank you for listening to this podcast. We are always interested in hearing from you. What do you find useful from this pod? What do you want us to explore more in the future? Please do press subscribe. It helps us reach more people and share the experience of all my guests to a wider audience. See you soon. Bye for now.